thousands of years of history you'd have to get into. But they, they seem like a couple of pretty nice guys, these brothers. Okay, Harry and his brother, or Edward. I guess. It doesn't matter. Everybody knows. It's just one of those things that, you know, you get older, you start shrinking, and if you don't take um, st steps to um, help it stop shrinking, then you lose your uh, short-term memory. So a lot of really stuff that in normal circumstances I would remember. When I'm trying to think, I can't. It's a short-term memory thing and all that. But anyway, I know I've been all over the place, and the point I'm trying to make here is that we have to understand profound paradoxes. I hate elitism. I hate it, you know, on a very small scale. When people, I've heard, I've seen people working on minimum wage uh, incomes that had a very elitist attitude. They'll support the banking bailout. They'll, uh, you know, just, I don't know how they even survive. I mean, to, to me, these, how can you live? How in California can you pay your rent? Okay, how can you survive in California? You can't on a minimum wage job without going and trying to get welfare. There's no way. It's impossible. It's just, it's impossible, flatly. So they're doing something else, but yet these people will prescribe to an elitist point of view where they think, hey, uh, you know what? I mean, uh, someday I hope to be one of those elite and uh, have my 401k come to maturity and I plan to be rich or you know in the back of their mind you got to wonder what they're thinking my parents are well to do so I plan on inheriting that wealth someday and I'm going to be in that you know that elite class so you know they're a mini elitist and I have no more respect for them than I do the maxi elitists which are these grand puppeteers that are manipulating us but let's be very clear that prosperity is a thus saith the Lord kind of thing. This is, has nothing to do with any uh, economic debate, political debate, social debate, or otherwise. This is a thus saith the Lord standard that we have to tap into and admit. It's a science. It's math. It's just as clear as the light of day. If you see through God's eyes what is his will for us, it is very clear and simple and succinct okay there's nothing hidden here his will for us is to be happy okay and we can never find happiness if we are born beholden to the money masters these are satanic forces okay it's as simple and cut and dry and scientific as that and I don't mean to dash anybody else's belief systems that we're just going to chip away around the edges and get engage in minutia and of creating jobs and we're going to have tariffs and we're going to fix the problems even though we've tried this back and forth tennis match, you know, a billion times before. It's like beating your head into the wall but saying, well, on the one billionth time, I, I just know it's going to work eventually here. That, uh, you know, just nibbling at the edges and, and somehow we get enough of our guys in and, you know, this voting and uh, political, you know, volleyball. It, it just makes, it sickens me. And I'm tired of it. I'm done playing tiddlywink. I want to play hardball, man. I want to get crazy. Okay, I want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I hunger and thirst for righteousness to be the rule of the day upon the planet. I can't wait for God's law, okay, to be the rule of the day on earth. And what is that law? It is the golden rule. There's no pressure, not on anybody. Treat others the way you want to be treated. All the other Ten Commandments will fall into place. We won't offend each other. We won't harm each other. Okay, it's as simple as that. You'll be going on godly instinct instead of this carnal, natural instinct that is corrupted from the original sin. The fall of man, this knowledge of good and evil, the subsequent curse we're all under, this idea we got to face death now that's corrupted everything, we'll turn to our godly instinct. And that is what he's, that is the calling for all of us. It doesn't matter if you're an atheist, if you're a Jew, if you're a Muslim, if you're a Christian, if you're real, if you're true to your beliefs, it's as simple as that. You don't need any other laws. You don't need Big Brother in any form. Okay, we're not going to need cops and, and, and jails and law enforcement of any type. We're not going to need banksters, okay? We're not going to need all these useless 
jobs out there that are very useful now. Don't get me wrong. The military I have great regard for the military and law enforcement and and uh, you know we uh, we could say well we need the bankers now we need a central bank because people need money and you know that's the way they've made us need money. You can't go homestead anymore. You can't just you know like Lincoln was homeless at one time. A lot of people don't want to face that fact that hey they used to squat back in the day and you know that was homesteading and basically you own the property after a period of time and you know uh, that's that. Do we have that in America? But people are going to look down on the homeless. I mean. They used to be able to squat. Can they squat anymore? They say, no, it's a private property or it's public property. And well, we won't talk about whose property public property is. It's, of course, the government. The only legitimate government is we, the people. But I'm just pointing out that it's insanity that we're accepting, wanton insanity that we've learned to accept slowly, gradually, the frogs in the water. They kept and they turned up the heat. Now we're cooked, okay? After the bailout of 08, it's just, we're just in there, we're cooked, and we're being eaten. And they're letting the, die, the poor die out in the cold. This is it. They're out. There's this rigged game of Monopoly people are being killed from. They're, they're dying, okay? They can't play the game anymore. All these homeless, they're not criminals, or else they'd be safely ensconced behind bars with three hots and a cot, okay? But now, to earn their, their, their way, they, they've got to do something really heinous. And recently, we all saw the images of the homeless guy just pushing some poor, innocent passerby, just pushing him out in front of a truck and getting run over. This is the, this is the kind of thing they've been forced to do because now the jails are full, okay, and they've got to let people off unless they do something heinous. And that would qualify as something pretty heinous. And you're not safe to be around humanity. If you push some innocent person out in front of traffic. So it's your fault. If you don't prescribe to saying, hey, let's get this skin cat, this cat skinned, okay, any way we can, immediately, because God's fury is overflowing, okay, and it, his wrath is coming down any time, and he is going to... He's going to stop his children from being bullied. He's going to lose his cool, and he's going to put his foot down. Mom and dad are coming home to roost. Okay, this is the return of Christ, metaphor or literal. It doesn't matter. It's the same effect upon the planet. So get ready for the Lord's will. You pray the Lord's prayer to be done on earth. That is God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. Perfect. Do you understand? So money does not fit into that equation. So all these people that profess to be Christians, but that's on the back burner when they're talking politics. It's all about politics now. Socialism and the oh, California is so terrible. It's all California. It's a local. Oh, look at all the homeless. Crap. Won't talk. Alex Jones won't talk about how this all came from the top. Unsound economic policy. When's the last time he had G. Edward Griffin on the show or Max Kaiser? I wish Max and Stacy had a show every day of the week for a couple hours. I really do. Max Stacy, if you're listening, man, the Kaiser Report is great. You guys keep getting better and better. You're expanding and talking about more stuff than this cryptocurrency and all this. Good. Hey, you know what? I mean, people need help. We need the currency that we're all floating around, okay, the one that's accepted, the Federal Reserve notes. We need that standardized, and we need it to be sound. You guys know that. There's no hope for the poor, the masses, okay, unless we do that. Wages are never going to catch up. There's no way. When the Labor Department's been intentionally, deliberately, unequivocally, inarguably remiss, okay, to the nth degree, okay, for decade after decade, okay, because when they do raise the minimum wage, right, they'll cite, well, yeah, it's a, you know, cost of living adjustment, and we all, okay, we understand, that's fair, that makes sense, you know, employers, they can bitch and moan, and they should, good, see, if they had done that decades ago, and every year, without fail, they gave a, an accurate, commensurate cost of living adjustment. And when the employers didn't like it, which they shouldn't, because wages should be going down, okay? Wages should be going down. A dollar an hour back in the 60s, now we ought to be getting 10 cents an hour, and it'd be worth more, buying power. Okay, that's true capitalism at work. That's supply and demand. That's free market. That's competition. That's risk. That's what would have happened. I know my stuff, folks. I know what the hell I'm talking about here. So employers bitch and moan. Then we get to the bottom of it. Okay, wait, are the markets being manipulated? Is there, uh, is there this stealth 
form of uh, price rigging going on. Aha, 